Uh, my name is DJ Platter. I'm a DJ here in the Bay Area, and uh, I produce music and make mixes. How long have you been doing it for? 26 years now, uh, this year. Yeah, so I started in the... I mean, there's plenty of cats that have been doing it longer that are still active, but as, by Bay Area standards, yeah. as far as DJing and producing and still actually being around, um, I would say I qualify as... as one of and as far as height too, right? You're the tallest DJ? No. There's somebody taller? Yeah, there's a guy named DJ Too Tall that's down in San Jose, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's when got did like, that happen? He's got like, he's a younger dude. He's got like four or five inches on me, actually. So, Damn. Yeah, maybe even more. But you held that crown for a little while, though. Yeah, I mean, it's not like a, you know, battle title that I would <laughs> aim to win. See yourself going forward, um, doing more parties or doing more behind the scenes? Yeah, the, so it's kind of a natural progression to... And especially in the in the kind of industry that we work in, because things change constantly. That you know, to keep yourself relevant, evolve with still like respect to your roots and everything. And Correct. I'm still, you know, I still have all my ideals embedded in what it is that I do as far as pushing what I believe is is you know genuine, true hip hop culture. And yeah. I was telling you, I don't I don't necessarily DJ as much uh, all the time. Like I'm definitely not on the grind like I used to be. I'm older now, you know, I'm yeah. settled down. Things have calmed down a little bit, so I'm. Doing more stuff in the background, working with some clubs, doing some some music stuff, releasing a little bit more music. You know, yeah. got the studio set up. As far as goes, like teaching the youth. You know, as, as, as hip hop has changed, and you know, I don't, yeah. want, to be, I don't want to be a hater, old dude, but you know, things have changed. Things have changed, um, and right. there's you know definitely yeah. not a level of depth that there used to be. Yeah, in hip hop, yeah. is it, it is is it our responsibility to to teach the youth? Yeah, yeah, well, without a doubt. I mean, if we actually give a shit about this. Stuff. I mean, I worked with kids for 10 years. I used yeah. to teach classes so, uh, all the time. I actually taught kids DJ classes in the whole nine, like before that was a big kind of popular thing now, which is great. Um, like, you know, like I was listening to an interview of yours, and I found really interesting that you were talking about when, when an album was made before, you would get your different styles of songs, right? right? It's yes. conceptual. Yes. Now, what you get is just one song. It's not as varied as it used to be. Yeah. I think that's the big issue. You know, if you were a 90s, like we talk about mm -hmm. the 90s a lot because that's the, the, you know, the era that we, we the primarily cool era that is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The thing about that era is you had, just like you said, on an album you would have different styles, but just in general you had so many different types of rappers and they all had their place mm -hmm. and they were all, you know, the, the, the guys that were really doing it at the time were were, uh, were super varied. I mean, you could have something yeah. like that, you know, and it could all coexist and you know, maybe we got a little spoiled by that. Yeah. And, and so, you know, now, unfortunately, it just, it's it's a little mundane. You know, I definitely don't subscribe to the ideology that all is lost. Correct. There, there is enough and there are, like there are these, and I know he's, it's kind of like the generic go-to for dudes mm -hmm. of our age, you know, when you don't want to talk about rappers that actually is Kendrick. Yeah, yeah exactly. So. He's, he, he is so adamant about keeping things interesting and reinventing mm -hmm. himself and, and talking about things that are that are important and doing things that are different from the norm, but also being dope at it. The thing I would like to actually really see more of, which is really unfortunate, and I, I think we never hear DJs fuck it up, you know, yeah. on, on wax anymore, dude. Like, it's really kind of unfortunate. I feel like that's just been a, an almost entirely forgotten thing I think the biggest issue is when uh, when things become too formulaic. Yeah. Like that's all, that's always the problem. That's exactly. the problem with everything, um, and it's certainly the problem with you know cookie cutter rap nowadays. Is that everything just sounds too much of the same, mm -hmm. and that's when you know obviously it's that's when culture starts to suffer. Mm -hmm. And this goes back to what you were saying as far as you know us playing some sort of a role. Yeah, is that you can't. Look, if you're going to teach the kids, you're, you you got to get on their level, right? Okay, mm -hmm. you got to you got to try to relate in what it, the best way that you possibly can yeah. to what it is that they go through their daily experience, right? right? So you can't just assume or preach at them. And finding that balance yeah. is really what's key. If we're gonna if we're gonna try to you know, I mean, dude, like even look, there were cats that that were young that were coming up in the '80s that everything that they knew about rap music was drum machine shit and yeah. like James Brown loops and stuff like that. And the cats just before that era were basically rapping over, you know, disco type breaks, yeah. right? And like, you know, basically, like when cats were playing, it'd be just pretty much straight ahead, like looped up funk music, yeah. right? And those two didn't necessarily love each other. Like, there's a yeah. lot of there's a lot of dudes from that era, like the really early hip hop era, that were like, dude, this shit. As soon as 
the eighty style rap and like Run DMC came along. Mm -hmm. Like fuck this, dude. Like not everybody loved like the old school heads didn't just love yeah. Run DMC right off the bat. Yeah. They're like these cats are dressing different. Yeah. They're rhyming over rock riffs yeah. and shit like that. Like they didn't love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was and then, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And so it's the same thing that you know the eighties cats. As soon as the nineties came along and and like the sound bed changed. Mm -hmm. A bunch of the 80s dudes were like, dude, why are you rhyming like soft over jazz loops? Yeah. You know, shit like that. Like, what, what's hip hop about that? That's not hard. Yeah. You know, we came from the street shit, you it's know, fucking chauvinistic. Yeah. Very, you know, that's, like, that's the big problem with hip hop, too, is right, right? It's very chauvinistic and like, uh, there's the issues. But now it's getting, the good thing, I would say, the good thing about the kids' music is they are way less. Uh, There's much, yeah, and much more empathy. Yes, less, much less anti-women. Much more open anti women, women, yes, Much more exactly. less chauvinistic. So it's good to see that that going. Yeah, that dude, it's right. really refreshing not to yeah. hear like. I mean, damn, man, in the '90s, dude, like the amount of like homophobic slurs homophobic, that you yeah, would yeah, hear yeah. In, in rap music, like pretty pretty much all the time. Um, you just you don't hear that the way that you used to anymore, and that's yeah. that's really that's that's an important thing, you know. Yeah. And I mean, you know, when you're teenagers, dude, and like, you know, the whole, the whole like overabundance of like literal songs, dude, mm -hmm. that were just about calling a woman a bitch, dude. Yeah. Like, NWA had a song, Q rhymed pretty much, you know, I think it was just him on the dude, but like, a bitch is a bitch, dude. Like, yeah. that was literally a song about nothing about, you know, yeah. it was strictly about women just being bitches and like the whole shit yeah. and it's like dude that would never fly nowadays and yeah. that's actually a good thing you absolutely know? Like, it's you, can't, absolutely. you can't yeah, like, you can't have it you know it's no you can't i don't know man i don't necessarily personally i don't necessarily get down with that whole shit where where you're just like like that had a time and a place and i get it you know what i mean i mean it's kind of silly and has some entertainment values yeah. and whatnot but i, I no, it is. It's, you know, it's, it's hard. Good, it's, it's good. It's not. It's not necessarily super negative that it existed. But it's hard to defend. Time, but it's, it's hard like, to defend. It's good. It's hard to defend, and it's yeah. good that it's gone. Yeah, it's good. It's gone. It's, it's good it's, that it's, good it's, gone. it's gone. You know, because like that's my whole thing. Is like I can't defend that. You know, no, it, it no, is no, what no. it is. It was what it was. You know, like exactly. I'm glad that it's moved on past that. Yeah. But there's there's really no defending. There's no defending that. Yeah, there's yeah. no way that you there's can good, verbalize yeah. some sort of defense for that, dude. Especially like if, dude, if come on, man, if you got daughters or married or whatever, like mothers and all that, dude. That's a, that's a rough And we've grown here. older, it's like, wow, that was wrong. Yes, you know? that like, was wrong. I, I, I hope that was actually evolved, wrong. You yeah. know, like, it's, yeah, it's like that's... I mean, you would talk to Cube and he would probably t say the exact same shit. Yeah. Be like, dude, I oh, was dumb and young. Yeah. yeah. Dumb. It's interesting, man. It is good to see certain parts of the evolution, but I think the thing, I think the ease of use of making rap music mm -hmm. is it could be beneficial, but unfortunately it has cut a lot of corners and that is the problem. It comes back to the first thing that you brought up, which is there needs to be some mentorship yeah. in place yeah. with a lot of it, you know? Like there needs to be more, there needs to be more of that, you know, if you're doing whack shit, somebody tells you that you're doing whack shit. Exactly. And that means that you should go back and practice your craft and get better. Yeah. Never be in the vein of like, hey, I don't like the style of what it is that you're doing, but there should always be yeah. a certain amount of like, look, you need to understand every step of what it is that you're Correct. doing when you're making music like well, i mean like there needs to be a little bit more thought going on behind it you know yeah and mentorship is important when it comes to shit like that. if you're a novice you should still be tapping into the best of your ability to yeah. make music i mean like shit that is actually going to last and is going to be worthwhile talked about revered time and time again down the line is stuff that actually took time and thought and care to make mm -hmm. you know your music is not gonna, it's not gonna last. Their history can be interesting. It's got like a stigma. Mm -hmm. It's got a really shitty stigma. I remember, I mean, nobody fucking liked history in high school or yeah. whatever, you know what I mean? Like it was uncool. But with something like hip hop and culture and whatnot, which yeah. is actually cool all the way around, like, you know, the, the fucking, the history, it's, it should always stay a part of it. I think that's just where the balance kind of goes yeah. in. Is there any projects coming out for you right now or? Um, well, one of the main things I've been concentrating on is, is I'm actually helping book and promote a club in Oakland called Hello Stranger with a bunch of DJs oh, yeah? you know, course, yeah. that are doing their thing and that's a lot of fun, that's been keeping me pretty busy. I'm constantly in the studio, I got yeah. some projects coming out this year, a couple of mixes, I got an 808 mix. Uh, dedicated to the you know the 808 drum machine. Yeah. So you're making beats. No, you're making beats. Though. I make so, beats yeah, also. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. I got a couple of things coming out this this year, like a project with a bunch of female vocalists is one of them. And then uh, one coming out on Needle to the Groove with uh, with the homie Edgewise. It's an EP that's going to be dropping. Yeah. DJplatter.com, at Platter, all social media platforms. So oh, do my thing. 
Good homie. Thanks for having me. Yep. Good homie for the last, what, 15, 20 yeah, years? Man.